Hi everyone, welcome back to Rose Stocks Buying Stuff. 2020 is my no buy budget year and it's the 1st of February so it's the end of the first month of me living my life on my budget and today I'm going to talk you through my January money diary so where my budget went in the month of January. <laughs> couple of things quickly before we get into it. If you can hear drilling, I'm really sorry. My neighbour has been at it all day and I need to go out tonight. So this is like, literally, I've left it as late as I can hoping he would stop and he hasn't stopped. It's killing my soul a bit. Um, so I'm really sorry if you can hear that, but hopefully you can't. And hopefully even if you can a little bit, I'm going to talk over it and it'll be fine. Before I get into it, I just want to add on some updates to my budget which was literally last week's video and I thought I covered every single thing I would need that budget to cover and I realised I actually haven't so that was interesting. Thought I'd overthought it to death and as soon as I finally made the video something else occurred to me. So something that I will spend on that is not coming out of my budget this year is charity donations. In my head I actually almost lump the ones that I pay as direct debits each month in with my bills. I don't even actually think about them as being a separate thing. They're just something that comes out every month. So they didn't even occur to me to break down. Uh, but I gave money to a homeless person a few days ago and I bought the big issue yesterday. And those are not things that I am going to risk being impeded by trying to save money out of my budget for other things. I will continue to donate to charity, it will not come from my budget. However, what I am not allowed to do is I'm not allowed to buy charity products where I could just donate the money. For example, and I should have actually thought about this in my budget because at the beginning of January, I donated some money to the wildlife conservation efforts that are going on in Australia because of a result of the horrific situation that's going on over there. And I donated that money straight over. So Lush have brought out a koala soap and it's really cute and I really want it and it's eucalyptus and lemongrass which are just some of my favourite scents so everything about this soap appeals but it's £5 or whatever it is, I've only seen it on Instagram, I've not actually gone in and looked at it in the shop and I'm not buying it because I could donate that £5 straight to the charity that the proceeds of it are going to. There is no need for me to have a product or to justify buying a product when that money could go straight to the charity. However, something like The Big Issue, The Big Issue is the only product that's kind I can really think about, but if something else comes up over the course of the year, you'll hear about it in my video. The people who sell The Big Issue will not just take your money. You have to buy the magazine. So I will continue to buy that because you cannot donate that money straight to the person who is selling it. They will not accept your money, so you have to get the product. The likes of the soap, I could take that £5 and donate it to the charity without buying the soap. So I hope that makes that clear, but that's where I stand on charity. The other thing I hadn't said that wasn't coming out of my budget is my Audible subscription. And again, it's something I pay out of my bills. And I thought to say my Disney life and Netflix payments, um, and I should have really mentioned Audible at the same time there. Again, it's something that I get a lot of use out of. And it was actually, I was replying to one of the comments in my last video, which by the way, thank you so much. The comments have been so lovely, so supportive, so encouraging. If I've not replied to you yet, I am trying to reply to them all. So you will get a reply, but thank you so, so much. Honestly, they've, they've really brightened up my week. So that has been really, really lovely. But I was leaving a reply to somebody and I was saying like, one of the things that I think has really helped me is that I listen to my Audible audiobooks on the way into work on my commute and I don't spend that time scrolling Instagram anymore which is what I used to do hence I used to constantly A see things because I was following loads of bloggers on Instagram which I've actually unfollowed all the bloggers I was following and that's maybe chat for another day because I'm really trying to assess how to interact with social media and bloggers and things like that when I'm in my state of mind, which is that I am vulnerable to overspending. So now that I listen to my audiobook in my commute, rather than scrolling Instagram, A, seeing things on bloggers or on normal people on Instagram that I then start to covet, and B, seeing actual straight up adverts. Obviously, social media has adverts to fund itself because it's free at point of use to us as users. So. I have no issue with them advertising things, but obviously as a person who is susceptible to that, I want to minimise my exposure to advertising, so anything that kind of keeps me off of Instagram and social media I think is good. Um, and it's also I think a better use of your brain to listen to a book than it is 
to scroll social media so I will continue to have Audible and I will not count that out of my budget however books as in if I go in and buy a book in Waterstones I still have to take that out of my budget because I know I'm very much somebody who buys too many books and doesn't read them and then buys more before she's read the last ones. Whereas Audible who I listen to that book over the course of the month on my commute so I know that I'm getting my use out of that. So Audible will continue to come out of my bank account and I won't count that from my budget. So those were my two budget updates that I felt I had to add in. So yeah now that that is out of the way let's discuss what my budget went on in the month of January. I kept my money diary on my phone so if I'm looking down that is what I'm looking at and then I transferred it to a spreadsheet. Saturday the 4th of January was my first thing that I spent and it was £2.50 on a nail repair so that came under experiences and services. Wednesday the 8th I spent £4.50 on another nail repair which again experiences and services and I also went into Costa while I was waiting my appointment and I spent £3.19 in Costa which came under food on the go. On Saturday the 11th of January I booked tickets to a thing that is not until November, it's a Disney brunch thing and that was £51 for my ticket so that came under experiences and services. Tuesday the 14th I had no juice with me and work so in the morning I spent £2.20 getting Diet Coke from the little shop that's near my work and then on my lunch break I went to Morrison's and I spent £2.62 buying a big bottle of diluting juice and some water. That came under food on the go. Wednesday the 15th I spent £2.60 on a nail repair which came under experiences and services. Friday the 17th I spent £10 on experiences and services getting my eyebrows threaded. Saturday the 18th I spent £6.50 socialising, that was at Barbarito. Sunday the 19th I spent £25 at Badger & Co which is a restaurant so that came under socialising. I also spent £3 in W. Smith in the train station which I put under food on the go because although I was at the train station because I was out with my friends I didn't need to buy that just to get the train. I feel like the difference with socialising food is that it's money that I'm spending to sit in cost or whatever with a friend whereas food on the go is food that I'm either choosing to spend so when I chose to go to Costa to wait in my nail appointment and spent that money myself that wasn't because I was in Costa catching up with a friend it was for me so that was like food on the go because it was a solo thing but although the WH Smith trip happened because I was buying juice because I was on the train with a friend I didn't need to buy that juice to sit on the train so I counted that as food on the go. That same day I spent £12 on a taxi getting home. That came under taxis. Wednesday the 22nd I spent two twenty-five in Morrison's. I haven't written down what it was but it was probably Diet Coke or Diet Juice. But Friday the 24th I spent £6.24 in Morrison's on Diet Coke and Dilutin Juice. Friday the 24th as well, after work I went for dinner and spent £20. Wait, Friday 24th, is that right? On Sunday the 23rd I spent one fifty five in Sainsbury's buying a bottle of juice and then I spent three twenty three that same day in the cinema. Again the cinema, it was the same kind of concept where I didn't need to buy the juice to sit in the cinema. So, and it's actually also just occurred to me, um, I didn't spend money on my cinema ticket because I have a Cineworld card which again comes out of my bank account and I was thinking about it as a bill but I suppose it really comes under the same as Audible and Netflix where it's like an entertainment thing that I pay every month that I know it's worthwhile paying because I get my money out of it. So 3 23 though on Diet Coke at the cinema comes out of food on the go. Tuesday the 28th of January I spent 3 75 on Diet Coke. The 29th of January I had to do a proper shopping top up of things that I had forgotten to buy that week and I spent 9 15 in Morrison's and then on the 31st of January which was last night I spent £35 in Gusto so that was on socialising. Oh that was a lot of reading out figures. I've tracked all of this in the spreadsheet and in total this month I have spent £206.99. That breaks down to £70.60 on experiences and services, £86.50 on socialising, £37.89 on food on the go, zero spent on books and £12 on taxis. And this was another thing about my budget is that I didn't specify I have my £250 a month if I don't spend it in one month I can roll it over. For example I have £43 and a penny that went unspent out of my budget which means that that got added on to my £250 for February so I'm starting my February budget 
with £293 and one penny. The other side of that is I can't roll money forward. So if I had spent £250 in January by the 3rd of January, I would just have no budget left for the rest of the month. So I can roll it forward if I don't spend it and it can accumulate, but I can't pull it forward before I've earned it. So before the 1st of the month, that money is on lockdown until the 1st of the next month. I hope that makes sense. So let's just discuss my feelings about it. And I'm going to be honest, my feelings are that I am shit scared at this point. I am not sure I've given myself a doable task. This month, I have spent £206.99. Socialising was 86 50 of that. Because it was January, every single place that we went for food, so I went out four times socialising and it, it was out for dinner every single time actually. When we went to our burrito, there was a buy one get one free offer, so it only cost me 6 50 for my burrito and a drink. So what Lauren and I did was we got two burritos, two drinks, a side of nachos and just split the bill 50 50, so it worked out 6 50 each. But obviously that would have usually been about, not so it's not an expensive place to go, but I would maybe have spent like 10 to 12 pounds usually. When I went to Badger & Co, there was 50% off food because it was January. So although I paid for my drinks and the drinks obviously were full price, the food was half the price it would usually be. When I spent 20 pounds in Hummingbird for dinner with my cousin, I had an offer where they were doing a menu that was two courses and a cocktail for 15 pounds. I got a Diet Coke on the site and the £20 was what I left to include a tip. So I should specify that all these amounts include what I paid in tip, which I know is not necessarily the cost of the item, but to me it is part of the cost of going out. So I wouldn't go out, I wouldn't get my hair done or get my nails done or go for dinner and not tip. To me that is part of the cost, so it needs to be part of the budget because it's it's a non-negotiable cost as far as I'm concerned. I just I would never not tip. And then last night I spent £35. Again, the food was 50% off because it was January. So what I need to take from that is that I need to make more of an effort when I am going out because there's always like 5pm deals or coupons or whatever. There always are those things and I've never really spent any time looking for them. But now that I'm on this budget, I'm like, right, I, like, really 86.50 is probably about as much as I want to spend socialising. And I don't feel like I socialised this month. That's the other thing. I feel like I have friends that I didn't see this month. That's probably as much as I can afford to spend socialising out of this budget. And I was only able to spend that this month because I had all these deals. So that's given me a bit of a fright. So I'm a bit like, how much was I spending socialising? when I was seeing everybody like you know and I was going out for dinner multiple times a week because the thing is in January everybody's a bit skinned after Christmas and it's a long month because most of us get paid early and then you have to make that paycheck last like six weeks so it it's quite scary because that's basically all I can really afford to spend but the only reason I've actually only spent that this month is because of deals so that scares me a bit and it makes me realise that I need to be more aware of what I'm spending when I'm out, not just ordering an extra glass of wine when I finish the first one and really thinking about, mm, do I really want another glass of wine or would I be fine with water or even Diet Coke? And also to look for deals because there are deals available all year round. I'm not under any illusion that there's not, it's just not something I prioritised. So that is like something that I'm like, right we need to prioritise that going forward. £37.89 I spent on food on the go. That's the best part of £40 and again, I know I was really, really good. You can actually kind of see, like, if you look down this column, you can, I took my lunch to work every day this month. So none of this is food. It's, it's more stopping for coffee or buying Diet Coke or buying diluting juice because I've not bought enough during my weekly shop. And you can see the month starts off and there's more gaps and then it kind of gets into more of an everyday. So I know that this is a lot less than I would usually spend. And the thing is, see at the end of the second week, I caught myself, my second full week back at work, I caught myself congratulating myself for bringing my lunch in every day so far. I was like, well done you. And not to be like, don't congratulate yourself over small victories because you kind of have to, but I should be taking my lunch in. That's not really a like, well done pat on the back moment. Like that is like, you should be taking your lunch in. It's healthier, it's more cost effective. It's not a well done moment, do you know what I mean? Um, but it, it felt like one. And it, in a way it was a well done moment because it's a huge contrast to literally up to the end of December last year, the amount of times I was buying lunch 
at work every single week and again it's given me a bit of a fright because I'm like I managed to spend £40 in a month when I know I took my lunch every day so what was I spending when I was buying lunch out even if I did it once a week and it was not once a week like that's really scary I didn't spend any money in books this month I got a couple of books for Christmas so it's it's not been an issue yet I've got loads of stuff to read at the moment so it's fine but Books are probably something that as the months go on will increase as a percentage of what they're taking out of my budget. I spent £12 on a taxi so I only took one taxi. Again that's a really 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 big improvement for me. I'm definitely somebody who was guilty of being like I'm too tired to walk up the road I'll just get a taxi home. Especially if I'd been out for dinner and it was a bit late and it's cold and dark. I take taxis too much so I'm I'm very pleased that I only took one. But that circles me back round to the last category which is Services and experiences. Now, I spent £70.60 on that this month. I didn't really get any services and experiences this month. That's, that's a scary thing. So I got my nails done at the end of the month, which would usually cost me, depending on the level of nail art that I get, somewhere between £40 and £50. My gran was getting her nails done at the same time and she paid for both sets of nails, which was very kind of her and I'm very grateful for it, but that means I didn't pay for my own nails this month. So there sh if I paid that, there would have been a £50. And if I put £50 on top of that, I would have been over my budget for this month. Like, if I put 50, if I spent £50 more, then I would have spent £256.99 this month. So I'd be over my budget. So the only reason that I wasn't is because my grand paid for my nails. And don't get me wrong, if I'd paid for my nails, I would have made sure that I didn't do something else and I'd have been more diligent about what I was ordering because I didn't get my nails done on the last day of the month so I would have made sure to claw it back I wouldn't have gone over my budget I know myself enough to know I'm not going to go over this budget but it's really scary that that one thing would have made me go over it and the other thing is I didn't get my hair done this month and I really feel like I've known I used to get my hair done once every four weeks maybe every five weeks at push Basically the first Saturday of every month I went and got my hair done and the way that I did it was that I got my hair done right before I went on holiday in November and then because I was going away between Christmas and New Year I got my hair done on like the 23rd or something before Christmas. There was no, I wasn't going to get my hair done on the 23rd of December or whenever it was, whatever the last Saturday before Christmas was and then go on the, f the first Saturday in January and then I was on this budget so I actually had an appointment for last Saturday and I moved it to today would be the first Saturday of February technically but I've moved it to Thursday night. That again, that would have been £100 this month that I've not spent that I would have normally spent. And I'm just like, right, so £150 between my hair and nails would have taken me, if I added £150 onto this, I'd have spent £356.99 this month, which I would take, I would usually get them done each month. And that would be in addition to buying lunch out a lot and to whatever I spent socialising, especially if it wasn't January and there wasn't 50%. Like, it's given me a real fright for what I was spending before in a mindless way. And I knew it was going to because the thing is I tracked all my clothing and fashion purchases last year and I knew I was on my beauty spending ban. And although I've included homewares and stationery, which I know are definitely things I was buying, small trinkety things that then end up causing clutter and annoying me anyway, but I know although I've included them as categories, they weren't hugely problematic categories where huge bits of my money were, it's not like I was buying furniture every week. So I know that wasn't eating loads of my money and I know from what I tried last year that clothing was not eating as much of my money as I thought it was. So I knew that this money was unaccounted for, but it's, it's mad. And the thing is, this £250, as I said, I've not pulled that out of thin air. I've sat down and I've taken away all my direct debits and I've taken away my bills and my things that I need to pay and then I've taken away, like I put money into an eyes every month to save, well, obviously I've taken that out of the equation and then I looked at what I was left with as my like disposable income. I figured out how much I need to pay to my holidays each month, taken that away, then taken a little bit extra so I'm saving a little bit more than I was last year which is nice and the £250 is what is left that is what I should be living off of every month is basically what I'm saying it's not come out of thin air so unless I want to compromise my holidays which I know I don't because I love going on holiday I love travelling that is a big like, priority for me in how I would spend my money it's something I'd prioritise so I don't want to compromise on it so I should be living off of £250 a month and I'm 
and my mind is blown about the fact that I wasn't and I'm like I'm completely bamboozled as to why I'm not in loads of debt if I'm honest like I actually cannot account for how I've been living my life which is terrifying because I should know how I'm living my life like it's ridiculous that I don't I'm so like disgusted with myself that I'm actually having to sit and say in this first month that I have done a budget and tracked myself I'm really shocked because I know in the months when I've not tracked myself I've spent way way more than this and I don't really know where that money's come from because I know I'm not in any debt and I know I'm very lucky to not be in any debt but I'm, I have no idea how I've been affording my life and how? Like how can I have been going along spending all this money not realising it? Like it's so mad but it's also so easily done. I'm partly disgusted with myself for the way that I've been spending beforehand because I really thought I'd had this super frugal month and I was like oh it's good. yeah like I've, I've not bought anything like we've had all these deals whenever we've been going out for dinner so like yay us like yay me I've taken my lunch to work every day and um, you know and I have put my hair appointment off so that I'm not paying for a hair appointment in January like I'm an I so frugal and then I'm like well you've you've still spent 206 pounds and 99 pence for your budget like I've still spent four fifths over four fifths of my budget in a month where it doesn't feel like I have spent my usual amount or indeed even spent things that are core parts of my living costs in as much as the frivolity of getting your hair and nails done each month could be a core part of your living cost. I really, I'm really sorry I'm just gonna say I'm gonna say loads of things over the course of this year that are going to sound absolutely ridiculous like the fact that getting my hair and nails done is a core part of my living cost when I I know how that sounds and I am really aware of it and I am very aware of my privilege and I want to acknowledge that I know how ridiculous it sounds but also it is it's an emotional thing and I like I feel like my hair needs done I'm really aware of the fact that my hair hasn't been done in about six weeks and that's not usual for me and I feel like really out of whack with it like I knew experiences and services must be where quite a lot of my money was going but the other thing is I sort of worked it out based on I get my hair and nails done each month and that's my core like core experiences and that's say £150 a month I wasn't thinking about things that I get done not super monthly regularly but reasonably regularly in terms of like waxing pedicures I don't get massages as much as I used to so they wear a bit more regular, they're now a bit more of an indulgence, which is really, I suppose, what they should be. It's just quite scary and it's it sounds awful, but I'm a bit like, oh, I feel a bit sorry for myself that I'm not going to get these things as regularly because I'm on this budget and I can't afford them. But I should have been on that anyway and I couldn't afford them anyway. That like, And I realise it just sounds so incredibly like I'm feeling really sorry for myself. But I also know that I'm not a hard done by person. But I do feel sorry for myself. And it's it's really weird to try and kind of take the the lack of logic that's involved in the emotional poor me response and marry that up to the logical thing where I realise I'm a privileged person who has disposable income each month to spend on things that other people don't have enough disposable income to spend on even if that disposable income this year is reduced from what it was. I don't know, I don't really know how to say what I'm trying to say, but it's not been pleasant reflecting on that at all. It's it's really been quite stressful. I think the thing is, I'm feeling like it's taken away my inner peace, but I'm also like, well, did you have any inner peace? Because you spent last year being like, I don't know where my money's going. At least this month I know where my money's going. I'm just a bit stressed about it. So it's not like I had inner peace last year, I just had my head in the sand. But I feel like now I'm just like, oh, this is really scary and I'm confronting these things that there was a reason I had my head in the sand about them. And it, it is quite hard. I know I will stick my budget. I know that I'm going to spend no more than £250 a month or if I get budget rolled over. But I, like I know myself enough to know that I am quite single-minded when it comes to certain things. So I've decided I'm doing this, so I'm doing it. 
and I know I'm going to do it, that's the thing, I know that I will do it, but I think I'm really appreciating that this is going to be so much harder than I actually thought it was going to be. To realise that literally like a few weeks in and knowing that I have another 11 months of this ahead of me is, is quite uh, budget stuff talked about. Let's talk about my no buy. So this is the other other side of I think the fright that I've had this month is that I have been on my no buy this month so I've not bought anything but I did get new things. That's something I want to, in these monthly spending diaries, that's something I want to monitor because it's not just about not spending the money, it's about the clutter and about the volume of stuff that I have in my life. So I want to keep track on that. Things that I got this month, even though I didn't break my note by, these boots, which I love very dearly, they are from Clark's and my grand very kindly bought me them. She knew I'd really like them, I saw them before Christmas and I didn't buy them and I was like, oh, I'm so annoyed I should have got those boots. They're a practical choice. They're a low heel, so I've been wearing them on a kind of daily basis. They are like shearling lined inside. I'm just trying to be careful because I have worn them. Although I will say one of the things that I liked about them was that they had this zip. So I thought, oh, like the laces are just decorative, but the laces still come undone. And yeah, laces, laces are a bugbear. So I'm, I think I'm going to try and figure out how to like stitch through the laces to keep them done. But yeah, that's another bit of chat. But yeah, so I didn't pay for these. My grand very kindly got me them, but I love them and I have used them a lot. And I just want to reflect on that statement where I say I have used them a lot because <laughs> this is my work desk diary that I have brought home for the weekend. But something that I'm doing this year, and I'll talk about this more in my next video, which is going to be a capsule wardrobe video, but I want to make sure that the things that I have, I'm hitting at least 30 wears on. So 30 wears is, as far as I'm aware, it came from Livia Firth and EcoAge, and when you buy something you should think will I wear this at least 30 times so I've written down the four things that I brought in this month and I've started tally marking each time that I wear them so I'm doing this just on my desk I at work because it's easiest it's sitting on my desk every day I only need to remember the things that I've worn at the weekend to add on if I need to add them on that's it's not particularly glamorous or a nice way to do it but it's practical and it's the way that I will actually do it so as much as I feel like I've had those boots on a lot. I've worn them six times in January. The thing is I wore them for the first time on the 19th because it was the day we went to look at Kim and Lucy's wedding venue. That was the first day that I wore them so I know I've worn them six times between the 19th of January and the 31st of January so I suppose I've worn them quite, that's quite a lot of times to have worn something six times within the space of what 12 days or something so it has been almost every second day. As you can maybe see from lack of tally marks elsewhere, I've not worn anything else. But let's talk about the three other things that I got. The second thing that I added in this month, this was something I chose. So this is a dress from ASOS, it was £35. I have an £100, well had an £100 gift card for, me, for ASOS and um, so I've got £65 left on that. Now you may recognise this because I was wearing this dress in last week's video and I love this dress so much. Again, I'll talk probably more about it in my capture wardrobe, but I decided to buy it. My body is changing at the moment and I decided to buy it in a different size because I really, really, really love the dress and I don't want to not be able to wear it. So I spent £35 on a backup of a dress that I already have just because my body is changing size. I feel like that's a little bit interesting because I could have got something new for that and although this dress is new, it's not new within my wardrobe in that the design already exists in exactly the same pattern and colourway. There is nothing new about this. It's the same dress in a different size. I'm quite pleased about that actually because I think I've really noticed how much I love that dress and I'm like, right, this dress, the way that I feel in it is the way I want to feel it in everything that I buy and I know that I like it enough that I don't want to be without it so I bought it in a different size rather than me using the ASOS voucher to buy something random and new that I might not like as much as the dress. The last two were I got a jumper for Christmas from Marks and & Spencer and I didn't like the fabric of it. it was, I've got eczema so I have to be very careful with woolly itchy fabrics and it was just not for me so I took it back and I swapped 
one jumper, the value of that jumper pre-Christmas covered the value of both of these post-Christmas in the sale. I'm quite glad that I got both of these. This is a skirt, it's like a wraparound skirt, it's in quite a kind of heavy material um, and it's got this sort of floral pattern on it and then the floral pattern from the skirt is the same floral pattern at the end of this shirt and the shirt again is quite a heavy material um, but it's a bit, bit more subdued as a pattern on the inside. I don't know if I'd necessarily wear these together but they are from the same collection. I'm quite happy that I got both of these because I liked both of these before Christmas and I would have actually bought them before Christmas but I kind of thought I was getting these for Christmas because I pointed them out and my gran had seen them and she was like oh I knew you'd really like those colours and things blah blah blah. I don't mean to sound ungrateful because I got lots of other things that I really liked um, but I, the only reason I didn't buy these before Christmas is because I kind of thought she was buying me them. She got me the jumper, the jumper wasn't right. So I swapped the jumper for these. I think it was a much better choice because I wouldn't have picked the jumper anyway, but also the material wasn't right for me. So I would rather have these two things that I know that I really liked and picked for myself than have one jumper that was a gift that I wouldn't have picked in my wardrobe. I have no regrets on any of my purchases this month. We shall see over the course of the year how many times I wear them. At the end of the year we'll be able to assess whether they were smart purchases or not. But I feel, well not purchases, smart choices. So I, I feel okay about what I've got. But what I think is quite scary is that, that that's four new things that I've brought in this month. Four additions to my wardrobe in a month where I don't feel like I bought anything. I don't feel, and I know I didn't buy anything so I shouldn't feel like I bought anything anyway but I don't feel like I added to my wardrobe this month which is ridiculous because I've got four new things but it doesn't feel like I have new things and again I think in the same way that seeing what I've spent from my budget knowing that it's a lot less than I was spending beforehand and that giving me a bit of fright so last year I tracked all my fashion purchases and I was feeling quite like, well, I've tracked everything I've spent for a year and I know that's not where my money's going. And it's not a money thing because I know what I spent last year. But I didn't track all my gifts last year and things that I didn't spend my own money on. And I'm a bit like, well, no wonder you've got so much clutter because in a month where you've spent no money, four new items have entered your wardrobe. And it, yeah, it's, it's a bit mad. And I, yeah, I don't know how to again kind of articulate what that really means but although I've spent no money if I was to have the same volume of stuff at the end of this or well at the start of February as I did at the start of January I'd need to get rid of four other items but I don't feel like I'm four items up because I didn't spend my money in those four items. It's that part where this kind of breaks down to like there's the budget part that is about me managing my money and there is the no buy part that is about me managing a my impulses to shop and the vulnerability that I have to being susceptible to advertising, to wanting to overspend, to emotionally spending. All of those triggering things about the way that I shop, that is what the no buy is trying to cope with by going cold turkey on. But the other side of the no buy is also about the clutter. It's about the amount of stuff and it's it's making me realise how much stuff I must be accumulating in my life that I'm unaware of because if I've not bought it and spent my own money on it, I'm not thinking about it. Hope that makes sense. So yeah, one month in, I think it's really starting to sink in how big a change this year is going to be for me. And it's a good change and it's a change I'm really glad I'm making because I'm so scared and disgusted with myself about what I must have been spending before when I wasn't doing this, wasn't tracking it, wasn't being mindful, even though I thought I was being mindful last year because I was tracking all the stuff I was buying. This is the thing, it's all these steps and I, I couldn't be doing this this year if I hadn't tracked all my fashion stuff last year and I wouldn't have tracked all my fashion stuff last year if I hadn't done my beauty no buy the year before. Like it's all these steps but it's kind of like every step that I've taken, I sort of think, this is it. Like, once I do that, that's going to explain it. And it, I know that I need to not think about what's happening next and I need to fulfill this step, but it's, it's quite scary in that I'm like, right, this is my third year into a journey of trying to overhaul my habits and I have still got so far to go. And how can this be going into a third year of 
changing what I was doing and I'm still discovering things and and I know that sounds silly because you should always be discovering things, you should always be learning but it, it's in my head that I'm a bit like but what am I going to be at the end of this year, like what am I still going to have to fix because I feel like it was beauty so I fixed that and then I thought it was fashion so I tracked that but that's not as big of a problem as I thought it was and now I'm trying to budget to fix that and it, I don't know. I don't mean to sound negative because I'm glad I'm doing this because if I wasn't doing this I'd be stuck where I was before not knowing what I'm spending and continuing to do that and I don't want to be doing that so I'm, I'm glad I'm doing this but it, it is quite overwhelming and I'm quite worried and I'm quite scared and I'm a bit like oh my goodness the magnitude of what I'm doing is starting to sink in but I'm also aware that I think it's starting to sink in but it's probably not. Does that make sense? I hope so. I hope this has been somewhat interesting for you guys. Thank you very much for watching and yeah I'm going to hopefully do a capsule wardrobe. My plan is to film this tomorrow. We shall see if I execute this plan the way I envision it. And hopefully if I do next Sunday's video will be my February capsule wardrobe where I will talk more about my plans for fulfilling my 30 wears. So yeah, I will see you in that one. Bye!